I'm a teacher, um, and uh, you know I'm here because I'm supporting what the South Sado teachers are doing. I think that it's time that we took back uh, teaching from the business leaders who think that they can do it better. We're the ones who know what teaching should look like. We're the ones who understand what exams should be used for and what they should not be used for because we understand uh, best practices around this. And it's time that uh, teachers get trusted again to, uh, to know what is right for our students. So um, is there a lot of support from the parents and the students? Well, we understand that over 500 uh, parents, I think it's over 600 now, have turned in opt-out forms. So, uh, so that's a, a very large proportion of the, of the parents here. This school? At this school alone. Uh, now we do know that the network uh, on orders probably from downtown uh, has had a, a very strong campaign against the opt-out and boycott, which, uh, you know, uh, basically they have, uh, my understanding is that they, uh, they got together and they did robocalls to all of the parents uh, with, you know, threatening messages basically, you know, saying that it could hurt the school, that it could hurt their children, uh, all of which really are untrue. We've looked into these claims, they're baseless. Um, the likelihood of anything bad happening to this school directly as a result and not strictly as punishment uh, from CPS uh, is practically nil. So uh, so this is just really um, a scare tactic and I think it shows that they're really running scared on this question because they know that the students are over tested. They know that this is really a, a, it, it's a, a really a farce of, of what's supposed to happen in schools. So what's going to happen tomorrow? Are there going to be teachers that actually refuse to give the test? Uh, I've talked to some of the teachers here, uh, and they say they are standing strong, and um, you know they really see that this is a, a fight that's larger than themselves, and a lot of pressure has been put on them. I wouldn't be surprised if a few of them who are in more precarious circumstances, you know, feel forced, uh, feel compelled to take a step back. But I think the majority of teachers are going to stand strong here at the school. Are, you, are they worried that there might be any repercussions from the Board of Ed? Yeah, the Board of Ed is being incredibly threatening. You know, when you have teachers who are standing up saying, I have to do this because this is what's right for my students and what the board wants is wrong, um, you know, then you get a situation where uh, there's just an incredible amount of intimidation happening. And, and I, I think that's the only reason. None of the, I don't think any of the teachers that said they wanted to boycott have been convinced that it was wrong to do it. They've just been convinced that, uh, or some of them have become afraid that they might be punished, uh, that they, their careers might be threatened for doing what's right for the students. So why is there so much push for these standardized tests? Uh, I, I think it's really about a, a business model of control from above. Uh, you know, if you, if you trust that pro teaching professionals know what they're doing, and that the only role for the administration or the main role for the administration is to provide the resources that they need. Well, that's an expensive proposition because, you know, when you're talking about students who, um, you know, are, are really suffering from the consequences of a great deal of inequality in our society, that requires a lot of resources to provide these students with what they need to succeed. Um, they would much rather spend their money and their resources on collecting data so that they can use it to cull teachers and, and blame basically the teachers on the ground rather than the policies that they're pursuing um, for you know, the failure to overcome the equality gap in both education and in our society.